this video, we will learn about the technique no opt out and how to implement it inside of a music classroom. Every teacher has asked a student a question and heard the same response of, I don't know. In music classrooms, this is also commonly seen as, can you play this? And the student responding with, no, I can't. This can be frustrating and confusing to deal with as an educator because we sometimes don't know if that response is because they are completely lost, they don't want to try, or they're acting defiant. Some common responses from teachers to a student saying, no, I can't play this is, okay, we'll take it home and practice it. Then the teacher moves on with the lesson. Or, you should know this by now, I don't have time to teach it to you again. And then the teacher moves on with the lesson. Or, okay, ask your section leader or person next to you for help. And then the teacher moves on with the lesson. These are all natural responses for a teacher to have, but the issue is that all of them are reinforcing that if a student says, I can't play it, then the teacher will move on and they will not have to try or play it at all. A more effective response is to not allow them to opt out and challenge them to attempt to play it. The key is breaking it down until they can play some part of the passage they feel comfortable with. Even if they cannot play through the entire passage, having them play through at least part of it helps reinforce the following in your classroom culture. Students are not allowed to not try by using the easy excuse of, I can't play it. Students will be held accountable for learning how to play the content taught in music class. The only way to get better at music is to try and to play and to practice things that you are not able to play yet. It helps students become more comfortable playing in front of a group of people. For example, suppose you ask a student to play a B-flat major scale up and down in quarter notes, and they say, I can't play it. Here are some ideal responses. Okay, well what specifically are you having trouble playing? The student says, I don't know how to play the scale going down. Okay, well play it for me going up then. Great job! Now for going down the scale, you do the same thing in reverse order. Try going down now. Okay, thanks for trying to play it going down. It still needs some work, so spend the next three minutes going over the fingers slightly while I work with the trombones. This is an effective no opt out response because even though the student doesn't know how to play the scale up and down, it challenges him to play the part of the scale he already knows. As a result, it not only helps the student understand you won't give up on them the easy way out by saying, I can't play it, but also helps boost their confidence in their playing and gets them closer to playing it correctly. Here is another example of a student who says, I don't know how to play it, when asked to play a B-flat major scale up and down in quarter notes. Okay, what specific part of the scale are you having trouble with? Everything. Okay, let's start with the first note. Look at your music and tell me what your first note is. B-flat. Okay, what position is B-flat in? I don't know. Look it up on your fingering chart. First. Right. Now just play and hold a B-flat. Great job. So that is the first note of the scale. Now spend some time at home looking up the rest of the notes and practicing them. In this example, the student either has a lower understanding of the scale or for whatever reason just doesn't want to play it for the teacher. The everything response can easily frustrate a teacher, but it's important to break it down further. Once you break it down to something the student can play, even if it's just one note, then it helps students realize that they can't opt out when asked to play something. It is essential to establish a culture in your rehearsals where students are encouraged and praised for trying to play something they feel they cannot play. This means that as the leader of the classroom, you need to immediately shut down any other students making fun of the player for not knowing how to play something or for not sounding that great. For positive reinforcement, you can implement whole class praise techniques, such as clapping, snapping, in order to encourage the students for not opting out. A common pitfall is taking up too much rehearsal time trying to get a student to play. If you have broken it down multiple times and they are still not trying to play it, move on in class. Spending more time will be counterproductive, and the rest of the class has already witnessed you holding the student to no opt out. 
However, at the end of rehearsal, take the student aside and ask why they refused to play. This can help you understand why they refused to play and you can use it as a learning moment so they do not opt out again in the future. Another common pitfall is if the student is really struggling and the teacher breaks it down so much that it turns into a mini one-on-one -on -one lesson with the student. This can derail the class because the rest of the students will lose attention. In order to avoid this, make sure to not have one-on-one -on -one student interaction that lasts more than two minutes. And ideally, try to keep it under one minute if possible. We hoped you enjoyed this video. If you are interested in learning more, we have a PDF attached below with some teacher prompts to use when students say, I can't play. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to get updates every time we upload a video on a new technique.